Hello and welcome to Fairtube. The thing is really running great. We got so much press. Right now we have about 38 different newspaper articles um, on our website. Um, so you can find all the links there. So we thought let's just pick some of them and uh, take a closer look at the text. And I'm going to do this from here. And then of course I have my friends at the uh, IG Metall in Frankfurt. And today they're going to go and talk from their library, which is a really an interesting public place because they sure have some interesting books there. Hi, yes, yeah, so today we're not on the 15th floor of IG Metall's headquarters building in Frankfurt. Instead, we're on the ground floor in the library. So let's start with the article from MIT Technology Review. And I actually love that article because it's completely professional. So the author really got experts for all of the legal issues involved. And I think it's completely unbiased. So great article. Thanks very much for that. The only thing is I would like to talk to that lawyer who was speaking about false self-employment because I believe if I would be able to explain to him how the life of a YouTuber really is and how much power YouTube exerts over the YouTubers that he will probably change his mind and say, yeah, that is actually false self-employment. So six. What do you think about it? I think we have a communication challenge. Uh, most of the ways that YouTube controls YouTubers are invisible to everyday YouTube users. So obviously the lawyers that are being interviewed for these articles are experts in the law. They're legal experts. They know their material. We haven't fully communicated how YouTube works, and that's on us. We have to get more people to get what's happening behind YouTube. On the topic of GDPR, Every European lawyer that I've talked to about this has told me that they think that this data, the labels applied to the videos by YouTube, are personal data of the YouTubers. We'll see what YouTube thinks about this. We're ready to go to the European Court of Justice if we have to. Then we have the article from Vice Motherboard. And Vice clearly understands the significance of this joint venture because together we are a dream team. The uh, IG Metal has experience uh, in the fight against big companies. They have the resources and they also have the political connections and influence. But of course what we have at the YouTubers Union is the deep insights into the YouTube ecosystem and also we have access to the YouTube community, otherwise we wouldn't be talking to you now. This was the first article about FairTube in English. The interview was a huge pleasure to give. I'm also really grateful that the writer allowed me to make the point about the mental health effects of the lack of transparency on YouTube's part. This is not something fun to talk about. Unfortunately, it's something we need to talk more about, I think. This is really serious. The fact that you can put a ton of energy and time and money into a video and then have it demonetized or blocked and not be given a good reason and not be able to talk to a human being about it and not be given any guidance about how to get it fixed Obviously, it has economic consequences for YouTubers. We're a trade union. We talk about economic consequences, but it also has psychological consequences. There have been a few articles, for example, from Julia Alexander in The Verge and Simon Parkin in The Guardian about stress, anxiety, depression, and burnout, and some even more serious psychological consequences among YouTubers. And like I said, it's not a fun topic, but I think at this point, it's quite clear that these unpredictable, unaccountable automated systems and the lack of a human contact person for most YouTubers contribute significantly to these problems. And believe it or not, we even made it into the London Times. <laughs> I can really see these distinguished people in their cool clubs, you know, reading the Times and then reading about us. <laughs> Great. And um, I also love their uh, phrase. Uh, you have nothing to lose uh, to lose but your channels. Yeah, channels that are already like only half of what they used to be because of how YouTube treats us. Landmark industrial dispute. <laughs> if that's not an epic term, then I don't know what is. The Times of London. This was amazing to receive coverage from the Times of London. This is certainly the oldest publication that has written about Fairtube so far. I think the Times of London is even older than Iggy Metall. Behind me, you can see some of the oldest documents from the founding of the forerunner organizations of Iggy Metall from 1891. Uh, if my Wikipedia skills are up to date, the Times of London was originally founded in 1785. So 
that's cool. Then we have the New York magazine. I think that author really, really understands where we're coming from. We don't want to burn YouTube down to the ground. We really want to bring it back into good shape so that everybody benefits. Fairness and transparency in YouTube's moderation practices. Yeah, that sounds as reasonable as it is. This article from New York Magazine is definitely the funniest. So far, I laughed in, in my typical American surprise at reading the description of our announcement video with Jörg and my boss's boss, Christiana Benner, as charmingly Teutonic. As the only American on the team, I can say it's correct and fair. Um, a sort of more content-related remark, the writer of this article quoted a great series of tweets from Julia Carey Wong, who writes for The Guardian. It's a tweet, it's a series of tweets from a few months ago. And the writer of the article said this is a sharp series of tweets. I think it's, it's right. I'm going to read it in its entirety. It's a little long, but I think it answers some of the comments from some of the labor lawyers who have been being interviewed uh, about our initiative. So this is what Julia Carey Wong tweeted in June before we started any of this. We haven't talked to her, by the way. This is completely independent. She says, we tend to group YouTube in with Facebook and Twitter when discussing problems with its platform. But I think it might be more useful to think about it like Uber, but for broadcasting. YouTube is basically the employer of its star creators. It pays them money in exchange for work, but it also sets up very loose rules that maintain the legal fiction of a non-employment relationship. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media platforms simply do not have the same relationship with their top contributors because the money still has to come from somewhere else. An Instagram influencer relies on the platform, but their money comes from elsewhere. Under YouTube's revenue sharing model, it's paying people to broadcast content that it does not take any responsibility for. That's literally insane. Then the channel representative press made a new video based on ours. Actually, they took ours and removed a few not so interesting parts and uh, completely changed everything in it. And I think it's a much better video. So I have to confess, I am really not the best video editor in the world. <laughs> but I think I can probably make a better slingshot. You should watch that video. It's really, really cool. You know, it's okay, Jörg. You don't have to be the best video editor on the internet, but you're definitely the best slingshot maker on the internet. And you know, like everyone who left a comment on our first video said, you look great in a suit. Yeah, then CNBC really delivered one of the best quotes that I've seen. Whether or not YouTube decides to change its policies as a result, the support Fairtube has gained is a clear indication that the traditional notion of work is no longer relevant for many people. Companies ranging from Google to Lyft have struggled to keep up as workers demand greater protection and a, in a, a rapidly changing economy. And now it seems YouTube is no exception. Absolutely, there is a ton of truth in that argument. You know, all these gig economy platform firms have kicked around their workforce for too long. Now people are just not taking it anymore. And we will see massive changes in that industry. It's time. Even the Uber driver that was driving me from the YouTube headquarter in San Bruno to my hotel somewhere in Oakland uh, actually seemed ready to go on strike and take up the fight. Okay, that was our little press analysis for today. I hope you liked it and I hope that you have already joined the YouTubers Union and maybe even the IG Metal if you're in Germany. <laughs> you can easily join the YouTubers Union by uh, becoming a member of our Facebook group. It doesn't cost anything and there are zero obligations. So come on, join us. And that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye.